Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. What's up everyone, Lance Hedrick here. And today I have an indecent proposal, wink wink. <laughs> you wanna take a machine that doesn't cost a ton of money, but you want it to be capable of all the tech in the world. You want essentially a decent espresso machine or a Unica Pro or a Senesso ES1, but you don't have thousands of dollars. You ain't got racks on racks on racks. So what is one to do? Buy a Gaja and you mod it. So let's talk about that in today's video. Over the years, one of the most modded machines on the market is the Gaja Classic or the Gaja Classic Pro. People have been changing out the steam ones, they've been adding dimmers to it, they've been adding PID controllers to it, and I actually have a video of that right here. It was one of my biggest videos when I started YouTube where I just install a PID controller and a dimmer switch and change out the OPV spring in order to create a flow profiling machine at a fraction of the cost. Today, what I'm gonna to present to you eclipses that not only in performance, but as a cheaper option if you do it in a more rudimentary way. What we have is the Gajuino. Gajuino is a project that was started by a guy that goes by zero bit up in the UK. A few years ago, he decided to use his savvy brilliance and he created an Arduino powered espresso machine. So he literally created a motherboard, shoved it in here, rewired some of the bits and created a flow profiling, pressure profiling, recipe saving beast of a little machine. Too good to be true? Yeah, well, it's not because it's true. When this project started, it was powered by Arduino, which some of you may know, some of you may not, we won't really get into it, but just know that it is some bits inside, right? It's like a, it's like a brain for it. And so he created this based off of some parts he was ordering from AliExpress, was doing a little bit of soldering, doing a little bit of wiring, doing a little bit of programming, doing a little bit of flashing, not that flashing, flashing, uh, like flashing, uh, piece of tech. Just look at it. You have a screen on top, just like you have on these other fancy machines. Yes, this is much smaller, but it's still, it's practical. It works. Because this is where you add water, they also added this little square door, this little square space for you to uh, add water in. And you know what's coming, Squarespace. Squarespace is an awesome, awesome resource for those of you who might be hobbyists or might be creators or might be entrepreneurs in order to take your ideas online. They have loads of different templates that are really intuitive, really easy to use, even for a schmuck like me. Whenever I was approaching this and I had to research what the heck all these coding words were, do something to your path and do something to your shell. I didn't know what the heck that meant. I had to Google it. And guess what? I still don't know what it means. If you are like me and you don't know those coding words and you don't know how to code a website, you can use Squarespace. You go in, if you want to change a title, you just click title and you change it. If you want to click the paragraph, click paragraph, you change it. You want to add a photo, click, you change. Easy peasy. You also can put a shop there. You can also start a community blog there. You can talk with people, you can have interactions and you can drive people to your YouTube, for instance. By using my code, www.squarespace.com slash Lance Hedrick, you will be able to get 10% off your Squarespace subscription. Go ahead, check it out, click the link below. Clicking that link helps this channel, helps me, helps this, helps us all, helps you and your business, and guess what? It's all good. It's gonna make you happy, it's gonna make me happy. We're all gonna be happy pulling espresso, pulling Squarespaces. Let's get back to the machine. And over the past couple of years, there have been quite a few people who have attempted this modification. Now, the original way of doing it was not for the faint of heart. In fact, I bought all of the bits a year ago and never actually attempted it because it was so time consuming. I was told it would take about a week to really get through with. And so parts of this, you know, you have little things for the tubes, you've got wires on wires on wires, you've got, you know, spades and you've got these spades. And of course I bought a multimeter, which I actually use quite a bit. You have like 3D printed parts, you have, um, let's see, where is the fun stuff? Oh, here you go. This is the Arduino Nano expansion. You could get all this for very cheap, but around $60 on AliExpress. It would take, you know, a few weeks for it all to come in. But at the end, for 60 bucks, you could completely upgrade the Gaja. So if you bought one secondhand for 200 bucks, for about 260, 300 bucks, you had a an indecent espresso machine. So I bought all of the stuff I needed for it. I got in the Discord group in order to get some help. I started by connecting a few wires and well, it became a little too daunting. It wasn't something I couldn't do. Uh, soldering, I've soldered before. I've, I've done a lot of this, you know, messing around with components in a machine. Honestly, the thing that intimidated me most initially was all of the um, tech stuff that I had to do online. And so once I had that understood though, I realized how much time it was gonna take. It was gonna take about a week overall to really get into the weeds and do it all from the ground up. And I just, I would be honest, I just kind of delayed and delayed 
and delayed. Sort of started and then, you know, I got distracted, ADHD, and then I kind of just put it in a drawer and forgot about it for a while. People kept asking, when are you gonna do the Kajuino video? When are you gonna do the Kajuino video? Anyway, thankfully something amazing happened. Even though Zero Bit was very intent on not wanting this to be a profitable thing, he didn't want people to take what he was doing and then sell it for massive margins. He did partner up with a couple of people around the world who are now creating these boards for you. So essentially what he has is instead of you having to get the, all of those pieces and soldering and doing all of this stuff yourself, he had people who would take one of these, well, it's a little different now. Uh, you know, there's evolutions to it, changes to it as they find better pieces. But essentially take one of these and get it all soldered and ready for you so that you don't have to do it. You can just kind of plug and play. As long as you're you know, okay with getting inside and messing with wires, you can now buy them already constructed. So I was like, oh, that's gonna save me a few days of work. I'll just buy that and go. And so I think overall I spent about 150, maybe 160 bucks for all the 3D printed parts, for all of the pieces already put together and then all I had to do was open the machine up and wire it all together. I bought those, they came in, and I put it all together. And it didn't take that long. But we're gonna discuss kind of uh, the process of what that looks like in case you're curious about doing it. And then we'll actually show what this can kind of do. But essentially what you get in is all the hardware with all the software already updated on it. You, all you need to know how to do is strip some wires, crimp some wires, cut some wires, and then follow a schematics chart. Looks intimidating, but if you sit there, you kind of study that chart over and over again, you get familiar with the pieces inside the machine, you disassemble your machine, it's actually very approachable. I actually completely rewired it and did everything I needed to do in less than about two hours altogether. And I was like, wow, that was really easy. And then I was talking to Zero Bit and he said, dude, you did it wrong. You have an eco version. I'm going eco version. What do you mean? No, I have just the normal uh, Gaja Classic Pro. I thought he misspelled and, and meant to put Evo, which I don't have the Evo, which is the new Gaja Classic Pro. He was like, No, you got the eco version, uh, which means that there's that eco shutoff in the in Europe, which is like a mandatory thing. And so there's another uh, motherboard inside that you've got to remove and remove those wires, and you have to do the custom wiring, which is the biggest pain in the a of all of the builds. If you're wanting to do this, I recommend not getting the eco mode because it makes it a lot more difficult and you have to redo everything. I'm gonna take everything out and I'll just use the wires in here and rewire it. So I tried to use them all as they were stock and that wasn't working either. I always try to find shortcuts. Last night, I actually went out, had to buy some silicon adhesive tape and I just rewired the bad boy. And this is what was powering the machine essentially. This had a lot of the wires going throughout it. Pull that out and I, you know, cut them because I was gonna reuse all the wires. And I did, because I didn't wanna have to buy any more wires. Here's the massacre that we ran into, okay? Making do with what I had. This looks very intimidating, but I promise you, and I'm probably not instilling much confidence, I promise you though, it's not that hard when you have the direction of the Discord group, which I will link below. I like to use these needle nose pliers, softly cut the rubber that's around the wires inside. Boom, it's stripped. In order to get a spade on, you just take a spade, you toss it in there, and you just crimp it. Squeeze it on there, and boom. Now you have a spade. So essentially you just need the connection between those wires and the metal inside of here. You crimp it on so it doesn't come off. And then you can fit this inside of a male spade, and then boom, look at that, boom. They fit right into each other, all right? Now I'm gonna clean this up in just the clap of a hand. Incredible, it's all gone. If you open up the machine, it can look intimidating. There's wires everywhere. As you start pulling them out and you mark what they are using some Sharpie, it really becomes a lot easier. And the fact that you have this community online that is more than willing to help you traverse these muddy waters, it makes it just super simple. And I was actually taking phone calls because it's pretty mindless to strip put the spade on, crimp, connect, nah, 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 connect. And since I bought the already preloaded, it is more expensive, but it made it just so much faster. Now, of course, if you're on a more tight budget, you can do the original Lego build or PCB build on your own, which all of that is listed out on their website, which is below as well. Now, shut up, Lance, and show me what this can do. You got it. I want you to watch this because this thing heats up really, really quickly. I'm just gonna hit on, and you're gonna see what goes on on that screen. You ready? Set, go. So it powers up, you see Gajuino, nice and branded. Thank you Zero Bit for the dope everything. Filling boiler, you hear that pump. But guess what, you spent 450 bucks or cheaper if you got it used. So stop your whining. Now of course we know there's a teeny tiny little baby boiler inside, 300 mils. So it's gonna heat up relatively quickly because it's so teeny tiny. Now what this does, which is super unique, we're already at 80 degrees, is because of the way we have this programmed, it will fill the boiler as the steam is going, gives you really long standing pressure. So it keeps that boiling temperature or over boiling temperature really when you're steaming and it keeps it filling. You're not gonna lose that pressure and it completely revolutionizes your steaming experience on the Gaja. There is this little bit of built 
pressure and it shoots out a little bit of water, but that's to be expected. So it goes up to temperature and then it comes back down to about 80 for a few minutes. And then we're gonna get back up to temp after about eight minutes and we're gonna be ready to brew. So we'll go ahead and we'll skip forward to that time and we'll start brewing some espresso using some fun profiles. All right, so I just have a random grind size. We're just gonna go ahead and hit, uh, let's do blooming espresso. There we go, profile switched. Now we're gonna hit brew. So as you can see, we have the same data that we get on something like the Decent. So you see flow rate's the yellow, so it has a flow rate of about four right now. The temperature's up here showing you real-time temp, and then we have the pressure. So we have blooming, so the pressure went up and then stopped because the flow rate went down. We're gonna let it bloom for a bit. It's probably too coarse since so much has come out in so little time, but I just kind of picked a random coffee and went with random grind size. Just to show you this profile, after the blooming period is done, it's gonna ramp back up. The set temperature is 93, we're currently at 93.9. And of course that's reading temperature from the boiler. We don't have a temp sensor at the group head in this. I'm sure that's something they'll do in the future because they're always working on it. It's a whole big group of volunteers doing it. All right, so at 45 seconds, we're now ramping up. All right, let's see what pressure it'll get to. Probably not very high because this is really coarse. So it's only able to get to about, I don't know, three or four bar, which is fine for blooming shot, no worries. And you can put predictive weight on. I don't have it on, so I'm gonna have to stop this manually. I stopped it at 50 grams. But yeah, there you go, check that out. We have the flow, we have the pressure in blue, and we have the temperature at the top to see what that boiler temperature was, which obviously it's gonna lose a little bit going to the group head, but in reality, they're pretty much connected, so it should give you a really nice indication of what the temperature actually is. So it was set at 93, and that's where we were sitting that whole time, so you have the that there, you have the flow rate and the pressure utilizing the same numbers on the left side of the screen. Now, of course, this is a small screen, but what do you expect for like seven bucks on AliExpress? That's what you're gonna get. So you can click finish, or you can click this back arrow, which there you go, releasing the pressure. So it's enacting that solenoid, releasing pressure out of that group head. And there you all have it. We're back at our main menu. So from here, you can go to home, you can go brew, which comes here. You can have flow on, flow off. You can have time, you have the flow rate, the pressure. Uh, we have the pressure above. So they're, they're, they're really trying to give you all of that capability of something like that, uh, like a decent. You have the soak, you have profile, you have manual. So on manual, you can slide this for the flow rate or you can do pressure first mode and slide it for pressure. So you can manually pressure or flow profile, which is really, really stinking neat. And then of course, over here we have the settings. Let's go to that, boom. So there you have it. All right, so let's pull one more shot. We're gonna do that kind of default one. We're gonna go ahead and hit brew. And so as we see here, flow rate, you see flow rate in real time. It's at about three grams a second. We see the pressure slowly building at 0 0.5, 0 0.6 bar. Temperatures over there. If you had the integrated scale, you would also see the weight plotted in green. So there we go. We build pressure up a bit and it cuts off the flow completely. And there we go, back up. So we're going to around one and a half grams a second at about seven bar of pressure. It's descending. And again, I'm gonna have to cut this off on my own because I, like I said, I was not in the mood to do the scale build but it's declining a bit more, declining a bit more, declining a bit more, and we're gonna go ahead and cut it off. So as you can see, again, it's just beautifully laid out there. You have the color codes down here in order to really follow what you're doing. I absolutely think everyone who has a gauge should do this modification. If you need help from a friend, if you need help from the community, there, it's all there. It's it's very cheap to do this. You can even buy the packs like I did, and they're still working on more and more packs to, to make it even more and more user-friendly, more accessible. Um, of course, because of all the labor going into it, it might get a little bit more expensive, but the goal of this by zero bit is for this to not be kind of a cash grab. So it's a minimal upcharge on these pieces whenever you get it pre-built because you are paying for someone's time but they're not like profiteering off of that. Let me go ahead and take a sip of this espresso. Money in the bank. And they're helping people online without any compensation is ridiculous. And the fact that Zero Bit is so adamant about not allowing this to kind of get out and to be behind a paywall to where people are gonna use his build and then you know buy a cheap machine on AliExpress, throw it on there and then sell it for 2000 bucks in order to take advantage. He's like, no, we don't want that. We will work with people though in order to make it easier. So I got my things through Peak Coffee. I will put their link below. The guy who runs Peak, he is uh, currently working with Meticulous and he was on the 
R&D team at Decent. He knows what he's doing. He had an incredible kit that I that I bought. Again, I said I spent like 150, 160 bucks, but I bought like everything. Even still, that's a bargain. That is as much as like buying the Mr. Shades PID kit and uh, dimmer and all that stuff you can buy from him. So instead of buying all that, you can get all this functionality. It might be a little more intimidating approach. Well, not more intimidating than the PID controller. I assure you that. In fact, it took me longer to do that PID controller than it took me to do this once I actually understood what I was doing because I was not reading the instructions. Uh, go figure. Shut up, Lance. Let's get inside this machine. So I'm aware that most of you probably haven't looked into a Gaja Classic Pro, but this is what it looks like. Of course, this is with new wiring and new pieces and bits inside. Some of the things that are massive changes, if you if you have looked inside or if you've already modded yours with a dimmer switch or something along those lines, you'll notice that not all of these are plugged in. And that is because we have more than enough going through these that are plugged in to compensate. So some of the big changes that are immediately obvious is down here, you have a thermoprobe inside as opposed to the typical kind of fuse. So you unscrew that, which is gonna make, make you take the boiler out, which I highly recommend taking the boiler and the pump out, it just makes life a lot easier. But you're replacing it with a thermoprobe there, which is gonna give us really nice temperature readings inside the boiler. The next thing you'll notice is I have a T-fitting inside of this orange threaded tube. Now, why do I have that? It's very simple. We had to route in something to regulate pressure, which is right down here in the bottom of it. It's a very important piece. And so we had to route that into the line from the boiler to the pump. So this is giving us that pressure as it's going into the boiler itself. What you'll also see is right here, we have that SSR switch. So this is where we have plugged in from the, the, from the board itself. And then we have one, one over here that goes to the boiler and one over here that goes up to the power switch. So this is going to allow you to heat up that machine. Inside of this original casing is where that first PCB board was. Now I had to take this out, pull out that PCB board, and then I put in the new board inside. So we won't be able to see that, but it looks kind of similar to the other, just a bit more fancy schmancy. You'll see a 3D printed case right here. And that is where people are storing their motherboard because they don't have this casing down there. Because like I said, the Eco is the one that has the motherboard already inside. So I just reused that empty space in order to save space inside of this machine. I've also added a T-splitter to the water tube, and that was more so just to have not two tubes going into the machine. That's a simple hack that you can use on your Gaja uh, regardless. Now, another modification that I have that runs to the motherboard inside is a water fill sensor, which is just under here. And that piece down there is magnetic and you can slide it around, but in reality you want it right in the center and it's going to give you some light up LEDs as well as uh, a reading so you know when you need to refill the water tank. It gives you a notification on the screen itself. So normally, as you know, this front button, when you push down, it wants to go back up. But if you take out the middle spring, another simple modification you can do if you don't want to take on all this, but you want some of these nice little mods, take out the middle spring and then watch. See that, doesn't bounce back up, brilliant. These low voltage cords coming over here, which you wanna separate from the high voltage cords. So there's a lot of things you really need to take into, uh, into account when you're making this build, uh, really separating the wires because they don't like being next to each other. As I say, it looks intimidating, but when you do it all nice and slowly, methodically, you have a nice clean counter space, you have the resources online in the community, it really is not a difficult thing to do. Read the instructions, make sure you're choosing the right machine for the schematics. When I finally finished it all, it was quite late at night and I was just exhausted. And I was like, you know, I just want to turn it on and I just want it to work. You know, most of the time you do these mods, there is a short somewhere or there's something miswired because there's so many things to take into account. Well, I turned it on and I heard the pump kick on and the screen lit up and I was like, oh my goodness, I did it. I did it. And I started to sing, Ne Sundarma, Ne Sundarma. I do not know the words, so I'm gonna skip to Vincero. Gosh, we know, gosh, we know. Then I noticed it wasn't heating up, and what turns out is I did make one mistake. The things I noted earlier where polarity really matters, I just had to switch those, boom, heat it up, and we were good to go. So that's what the insides look like briefly. Now, that doesn't bring into account that there is a whole other modification that I can do and I will do in the future. I just did not have the patience to do it right now, and I really wanted to talk about this while it was fresh on the mind. But you can create a scale inside the drip tray with these loading cells, with uh, this other tech, this other piece, this other board, all this stuff, which I have over here in my little Gushwino kit. You can create it so you have gravimetrics. Yeah, legit. You put two loading cells in it. That is nuts. Those Akaias just have one. 
that's double the Akaya. Are you kidding me? There is that big warning that this, if you have a warranty, it will void your warranty. It is a, a dangerous high voltage machine that could cause issues if you leave it plugged in. I will be doing a follow-up video. I will be comparing it to uh, things more straight up like a decent. I will have the integrated scale and I'll talk about my long-term use with it and how I think about it at that time. But with the use I've had with it now, with its capabilities just right off of the bat, with the, with the help of the community where you can share ideas, share profiles, with the ease of updating it, you'll put an STP right out the back and you can just plug in and go upload. All of that makes this just such an incredible, incredible contribution to the coffee world. No longer do you have to spend thousands of dollars in order to get this capability. Also, I should note, you can do this to some other machines if the insides are similar. It's like Ranchilio Silva, you can Gajuinify. So if you have a Silvia at home, you wanna make it like dope, like this dope, you can do it. And the people will help you in the Gajuino group. Even though it's not called Silvianino, they'll help you. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider hitting that like and subscribe. Check out my Patreon. After I'm done with my second video, I will be giving this away to one of you. I will not be able to keep it because we bought this together, essentially. It'll be a competition kind of thing and you'll be able to, someone will win it in the world. Uh, I, when I did my past Gaja video, a friend of mine in Brazil ended up winning it. And guess what? She ended up getting third in the Brazilian Barista Championship. That could be you. So check out the Patreon. We have a cool Discord connected. I do my lives on my second YouTube for my Patrons and uh, all that's linked below. So check it out, you know, give some love. And thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Until next time, I hope that you brew something tasty and cheers.